Welcome back, my lambs, to this bed we made. We're ready to break all the rules in the house and uh, head over to room 507. Because they're not home, but they have the do not disturb. So we're going to not disturb. I mean, really, what we should have uh, seen the seen the pictures said. You know what? None of my business. Okay, we got some cherry brandy, which is the same stuff that's in what's his face's room. Very interesting. Part of England. Nice. Ah. Two glasses of lipstick, different colored. Interesting. Mr. Cruz, huh? Uh huh. Protect the dream. What do we got here? States, times. What does it all mean? Fair enough. Eighteen twenty-four. Red line filter. King sized. Ooh, gloves. Nice. What's in drawer two, though? Nothing. Whole lot of nothing. Open and closing. We got pills. We got more cigarettes. What is this? Frosted Pops. Free yo-yo side. Oh, free yo-yo inside. Free yo-yo inside. What is this? Okay. The sun. Okay. This is like... Michael's like oh, a kid. Michael. Adults can be so confusing. I promise it's not you. I'm sorry, but mom asked me not to tell you the name of our hotel. She allowed me to talk about our room, though. We have two little beds, a radio, and even a television. Mom let me build a fort, and the maid said, uh... The fort and the maid brought us extra blankets. She's really nice. The hotel is nice, too, but I miss home. I wish mom and you could be happy. I wish everything could go back to the way it was before. But mom says it's impossible. She says she no longer loves you. Do you think she'll ever stop loving me, too, Michael? Michael. I don't think so, Michael. The fastest way on rails through the Midwest. So you were eager to set up a meeting, but didn't want anyone noticing. Uh-huh. I hope you are well in spite of the circumstance. We've been on the train for two days now. It's a long ride. Made even longer by the fact that I can't wait to see you again. We are scheduled to arrive in Montreal. On the eve of Valentine's Day, I booked room 509. It's a marital suite. When we arrive, please refrain from talking to me until we can figure out a safe way to meet each other. Say hello to Michael for me. M. Miss Beaumont. Alright. Very nice. It's a car. What's this? Keep batteries out. Battery chamber when not in use. All right, so it doesn't drain the bats. Ten rainbow crayon. Oh, yeah, some of them are missing. They're right there, I guess. Good. It's a nice little nook. What do we got here? La Grammaire pour toi. Nouvelle edition. It's Michael's. All right, and Bercy, subject, Michael's withdrawal from school. Dear Mrs. Bercy, we have successfully uh, processed your request to withdraw your son, Michael Bercy, from his school schedule and system under the agreement that you will continue his education from home. Following this letter, you will receive a list of books and school materials you will need to purchase in order to follow the curriculum from home. A social worker will be in touch to help if you understand our milestones, if that uh, so that your son can benefit from our program, from the comfort of his own home. Thank you for thinking of your son's education. 
Donald Byron. Me, Donald Byron. Some games really stand the test of time. I used to play this with mom all the time. Aha. Keys are a Snoop's best friend. Yeah, what is this key for? I mean, we're gonna pick it up, obviously. Sounds like this is from your school days, but the name of the sender is smudged. Okay. Dear Anne, you were right. I miss the snow already. It's so hot now in Texas. It's quite a shock after the cool weather of Montreal. My family has never seen snow before, and I could not find the words to tell them how beautiful it is. They don't understand what they're missing. I wish I could build my brother's I uh, wish I could build my brothers a snowman like the one I built together a few weeks ago. I know it's childish, but I uh, but had I not had that much fun in years. Okay. Christmas was exhausting. Nine days of eating, singing, dancing. It's great fun, but I am glad it's over so I can rest a little. Of course, celebrations will resume for New Year's, but it gives me a few days to relax. How are things going with your family? I know you don't get along well, but... I hope we're still able, uh, we, you are still able to have a good time. I will leave for Montreal on the 8th. I cannot wait to be back. I miss finding black cat hairs all over my clothes. I miss our late study sessions at Harry's. I even miss Sister Miller's classes, if you can believe it. I will see you soon. Warm wishes. Warm wishes. Oh, I thought there was legs attached to those feet. Just got spooked. So a husband can abuse his wife and just get away with it? And people like Linda still think divorce is wrong? Right? Linda, get the hell out of here. Dear Anne, I have met with Lewis, and he asked me to give you this enclosed letter. I think it should uh, reiterate that some of our associations, such as wife abuse, are not grounds for divorce in Quebec. Bullshit. I guess at this time. But, uh, you know, I understand you are hurt, but I do not think agonizing your husband is very wise at the moment. What a, what a ominously shitty thing to say. Do not forget to be in court at 11 a.m. on the 20th. Be on time. Also, a friendly reminder that my fees for January need to be paid before the end of this month. I'm happy to help you out, but I cannot work pro bono on this. Sincerely, Howard. Howard Richards and Carter. I think he's Howard Carter or Howard Richards? Dick Rich? Dick Cart. Which one are we talking? Ah. <laughs> Can she resist the ultimate temptation? Adam or Eve? A confession of a shocking and forbidden love. A heartbreaking decision. Should Rose stay in a marriage that no longer makes her happy or seek refuge in the arms of a woman who truly understands her? Who knows? Those few coins in my tip jar were getting pretty lonely. They'll appreciate the company. This letter has been sent to you and has been around uh, world, been around the world three times. The one who breaks the chain will have bad luck. Mr. Smith received the letter in 1953, made 33 copies, and said three uh, sent them three days later. He won the lottery. Mr. Jones received it in 1956. He made 33 copies and sent them. Three days later, he discovered an old treasure in his backyard. Mr. Williams received the letter and burned it. His wife and three kids died in a fire that very night. Mr. Green forgot the letter in the drawer and lost his job. When he found the letter again, he got a better job than before. No one in, in no case should this chain be broken. Make 33 copies and send them. You will experience great joy within three days. Stop. You will be cursed by the woman of the well if you don't send this email. I didn't do much, but I'm glad it meant something to you. Thank you 
so much for taking care of the room every day and bringing us extra sheets. Michael and I wanted to give you a little something before you left. Sincerely, hey, that's cute. That look in your eyes. You don't need to know my name, but you've seen me. I've recognized that your lack of eyes when you checked in. You and I don't need to make... Uh... You and I don't need to make a fuss out of this. You keep your wits about you and I'll do the same. What, what does that mean? What is going on? What is this? The winds and the leaves that day make a sound that sounded like a sound that sounded like... Really, Anne? Jesus, this is bad. Alright. Cute. Just trying to write some stuff. Uh, But I mean, obviously, you know. What will her family and society as a whole think of her as she turns to a life of sin? Should she be more confident? Or, or should she be condemned even for entertaining the thought of leaving her husband? Or pitied for having to make such a heartbreaking decision? Hold on. Such novels as And They Were Roommates and The Lonely Girl. Adam or Eve is her seventh novel. This is... Listen, she's done this seven times. All right, let's see what's in the bathroom. What do you got in here? All right. He's all but outright threatening you. Oh, I hope you can stay as far away from him as possible. I just met with your damn lawyer. You've got some balls to accuse me of that. As if you were so uh, irreproachable yourself. Do you think I don't know where you spend your nights? But worst of all is that you won't let me see my son. You won't even tell me where he is. If you think you have a chance to get custody, you really don't know me well. I won't let you take Michael away from me. All right, well. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. What we got here? Looks like someone grew tired of looking at your face, Mr. Beaumont. Oh, oh, Mr. Beaumont, was this the wedding ring? All the diamonds are still in? I think. Yeah, they're still there. Nope, don't clean, don't clean, don't clean, don't clean. I messed up when I took the trash out of the garbage, but. Montreal, Canada. Metzkelf. All right, well, let's uh, back this closed. Keep everything the way it was. Anything in here? Anything over here? Let's find out what this key unlocks. Oh yeah, I guess that's something. Something in this? Uh, what does the key unlock? Oh, this. It's gotta be this, right? I'll need another key to unlock this. Haven't I seen one just like this somewhere? No? no? Have I? What's this, dog collar? Greta, cute. Uh, that's a spoon. Okay, where- The key looks so familiar. Why do I associate it with room 505? I don't know. Why do you associate it with room 505? Oh, five. A key in room 505. Uh, is it in here? No. Did I, like, miss a key prompt? No. This one? It's not in here. Well, let's get out of the way and close the door. It's in here. Not there. 
Where the hell's the other key? Home, this thing. No? No? Why do you associate it with this room? No idea. Uh, this. This. I have literally no idea what she's talking about. Why do you associate with this? Oh, there's another crime novel? And they were roommates. She was alone in a town she barely knew, hundreds of miles away from home. She was desperate for comfort and found it in the arms of the most unexpected person. What first started as a normal friendship between two women soon blossomed into something much more passionate and disturbing. This is a tale of love and desire like you have never read before. Out of her own experience, the author, working under a pseudonym, tears the curtain from the one of the gravest threats of modern society, uh, social morality. The strange love practices trapping unwary, uh, unwary girls today, particularly in our larger cities. Hold on, hold on. What is that in there? Uh, it's just a just a notebook. I guess I can. Yeah, I should probably make his bed, right? Can't believe I didn't make the bed before. Place a pillow. Where's the other pillow? What's this? Dirt on the ground. Gotta clean that. Where's your other pillow, sir? Why do people just throw their pillows on the ground? That's bizarre. I'm sure it happens, but. not in here. No, it's not there. Was it in here? What's in this? What's this? Alright. Uh, what? Where is it? Where's the thing? Where's the key? Why does it remind you of this room? It doesn't remind me of this room. Socks on the radiator. Gross. It's gonna stink up the whole house. We are radiator feet smell. I do like that I'm telling this to a cop right now, and it's, uh, it's taking, describing your day like this is crazy. And then I open up the drawer, and I close it again. Then I open up the bottom drawer, and then I close it again. And I thought that if I opened up every drawer in the room, some, some form of inspiration would come to me. I looked at the suit and ties. Who's this? Nail clippers? This thing? What's this? Little straight razor, nothing. Nothing to see there. Oh, I'll uh, pick that up. Don't need that there. Yeah, I gotta do my job. I gotta clean up the room. Different cigarette brand. God damn. Marcella. God knows where she is. 
Yeah. Clarington Hotel reception desk. Beth speaking. Hey, Beth. Bean, I've been meaning to speak with you. Oh, about what? Well, a little birdie told me Mr. Morgan and Mr. Cruz had an argument yesterday evening. Okay. Really? Who's your little birdie? Jacques. Apparently, it got so heated he had to get involved. Damn. Listen to this. It sounds like we were on the right track. Because he heard a particular word thrown around quite a lot. Want to guess what it is? Uh, Cowabunga Affair. Fair? Bingo. Bingo, bango, bongo. Did Jack hear anything else? From what he told me, it seemed like Mr. Cruz was accusing Mr. Morgan of having an affair with his wife. Wouldn't have expected Mrs. Cruz to fall for a man like Morgan, but I Damn. guess the heart wants what the heart wants. Maybe, but... That doesn't explain Mrs. Beaumont's involvement with Mrs. Cruz. What do you mean? I found a chest in room 507. I think it can only be opened by turning two keys at once. Yeah. I found one of them in Mrs. Beaumont's things. Oh, and the other one? Well, I remembered seeing a similar key in one of Mr. Morgan's stocking pictures, so yep. I went back to check. Mrs. Cruz wears it as a pendant. It looks identical to Mrs. Beaumont's key. Wait, so... Mrs. Beaumont and Mrs. Cruz own identical keys that are both needed to open a mysterious chest. Damn right. Yeah, there's definitely something going on here. All right. Uh, maybe they're maybe they're just good friends. Uh, yeah. I think Mrs. Cruz and Mrs. Beaumont might be the ones having the affair. That's an interesting theory. Yeah. Did you find any clues that might support this? Oh, well, they all <sighs> They all I mean, have some really I did find a letter that suggests they may have gone to college together. Suggestive books. They could just as well be good friends, right? <laughs> yeah, that's one way to put it. I guess we'd know for sure if we could have a look at that chest, but I don't think I'll be able to open it. I've looked around room 509. I would have seen the second key if it was there. Mrs. Cruz must have left with it this morning. Hmm, yeah. We were so close. I can't believe it all ends here. Well, hold on. I may have an idea. Mm -hmm. Get me a candle and some plaster. And maybe I can do something about that pesky chest. Oh my god, you're gonna... No. I'll tell you later. Just find me those things and I'll meet you in the basement. As soon as I manage to leave my post. Okay. Thank you for not giving up. Come on, you know I wouldn't let you down. We're supposed to clean rooms. That's our job. Not get plaster keys. Let's not get too excited there. All right, let's get that key again. Just leaving all the doors open. Especially ones with do not disturb signs on. All right, let's take the key. Oh, we still have the key. Keys in our inventory, good. So we need some wax and we need some plaster, right? Plaster and candles. Well. Half the hotel's under renovation. I should be able to find plaster somewhere around here. Yeah, there's plaster right here. I almost picked it up earlier. Hey, this takes care of half of this little scavenger hunt. Okay. As for the candles, does that Rebecca keep some in her locker downstairs? Oh, good. There we go. I can probably find the rest of what I need in the basement. Nice. Let's go to the basement and find some wax. Excellent. Down to the basement we go. Rebecca, Eugene, Bobby, Jacques, Anthony. Where's Rebecca? Where you at, Rebecca? Damn. 
not the one that was always eyes on me. Uh, this video. I can't believe that I fell in love with you. Damn. Okay, well, Rebecca, where where your locker at? It's gotta be in here, right? Looking for Rebecca's locker. That is not Suzanne, Wendy, Carol, Joe, Beth. What's what do you got in here, Beth? What is this? Wait, is this you, Beth? What on earth led to this picture being taken? Hell yeah. Hmm. Oh. Find one of these in the room too. The white cat must be a popular spot. Are you looking to buy land? I know you grew up on a farm. Uh huh. Looking to get back to nature. Okay, well let's close this. Rebecca, I'm going to steal your wax. Was what, no candles? God damn. Uh, the VIP in guest room 602 is getting on my nerves. He keeps ordering food that's not on the menu. We don't usually do special orders, but Bernard was adamant that we make all his wishes come true. Do I look like a goddamn genie? That's not even the worst of it, though. Every night, he barges into the kitchen as if he was at home asking for meat. Uh, meat for his precious little terriers. Who feeds dogs $4 roast beef? I can't even afford $4, $4 roast beef for myself. Bobby. Damn it, Bobby. So you do have a stash of candles. But where is it? The kitchen is out of power again. I can barely see a thing. Bernard wants us to continue working, but I'm not risking chopping off my finger for that blowhard. Didn't you start hoarding candles since the last power outage? I remember you saying you never wanted to get caught in the dark basement again. Where's your stash? It's your kitchen. Please. All right, where, where is it? Where's your stash at? All right, let's close this. Toilet. Mm, I'm good. Okay. Every penny adds up, Sophie. All right. Yeah, where are the candles? Probably over here somewhere, right? That would be my guess. This would be a logical place to hide candles. In the storage place. Maybe they're in here. Tempting, but every penny adds up, Sophie. Okay, she doesn't want to buy coffee, she doesn't want to buy nylons, what's the matter for you? Uh, have you heard, well, okay, let's, 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 have you heard there's a famous movie director staying in 602, J? Yes, there was when I checked in. I don't know who he is, but he's pretty important because Bernard almost licking his boots. He even let the man bring his dogs to the hotel. Is he shooting a picture in Montreal? I've heard there uh, he's uh, he's here on a scout, but I'm not sure what that means. Maybe he's making a picture on Boy Scout. No, I don't think that's what it is. Do you think he'll shoot in the hotel? I hope he does. Imagine we could meet famous actors like James Dean. Let's hope the director has supernatural powers because Dean is very much dead. What? James Dean is dead? It's true. Died in his car. Car accident. A very haunted car. James Dean's car. A strange thing whoever keeps stealing my lunch I want my Tupperware back All right. what no wet okay where are these things don't worry gossiper I'm coming back to you I still haven't learned all of Gracie Jones secrets and there's a little secret exposed. We gotta get our key back. So let's do that. Let's uh, inspect. Gotta hold on to these tight. Yeah. Let's uh, pick those back up. Hmm. Where would they be? Alright. Alright. 
Those are fun. Your job is to prank others. I like that. That's a good job. Uh, no, not going in there. So. Maybe Bobby took some candles from Rebecca already. All right. Well, we got our key back. So let's go to the closet. Or do we go to Bobby's locker? Yo, Bobby. What do you got in here? What is this? No candles, but this looks like the laundry room. Okay. I'm going to close this. Thank you. Alright. Locker room. Maintenance that way. Where's the laundry room? Break room, laundry room. Let's get in there. Alright, we're going to speed run these candles. They should be right here. Right. They should be right in there. Maybe they're right there. Oh my god. Candles in here? No? There they are. Stash uncovered. Reb, you won't mind if I just take one, right? Got a candle. Now, what next? What? We got we got a meter. Right? Let's see if Beth is around. Yeah. Alright. Hide the evidence. Let's go check out Beth. There, there she you is. Are. I'm not sure I understand what the plan is here. Oh, well, come on. When I was little, we had padlocks on many of the farm's sheds. My dad would always lose the keys, so one day he made a mold of them using wax and plaster. Uh -huh. I was thinking of doing the same. Are you sure it's gonna work? Absolutely not. But hey, I guess we won't know until we try. That's right. You're right. So let's do this. Hey. Wet the water? Okay. To start, we need to pour the wax from the pot. Oh. Oh. Uh. Come on. I need to... Pour. Pour. There you go. There we go. Done this before? You're a real pro. Oh, don't stop. Now, time to put the key into the wax. Let's give it a few seconds so the mold really takes form. Mm hmm. Okay, I think you can remove it. Yep. Nice. Well, we're almost there. Just pour the cup of plaster into the mold. Pour. Pour. There we go. All right. Now we wait for it to dry. How long do you think it's going to take? I don't know. I guess we'll keep poking it every now and then. I bet you didn't think you'd be making a plaster key today, huh? <laughs> Indeed. But I like it. It's rare that this job allows me to use my creative side. That's fair. Your creative side? Well, granted, this key won't end up in any museum, but... I enjoy the occasional artistic endeavor. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. What do we got? Like drawing? Like taming alligators? Like drawing? Oh, like yeah. posing with alligators? There you go. How do you know about that? Oh, um, I think it must have slipped out of your locker because I saw this picture of you in a long white dress and... Oh my, you did? What did you think of it? Uh... I loved it, actually. Hell yeah. It was unique, I guess. Artistic? Yeah. Those pictures were taken by a very close friend of mine a few years back. Zebra mm -hmm. Rivers was her name. Earth-shattering talent, but a bit too controversial for most people's sensibilities. Ah, there you go. Oh. Are you still friends? No. We... Uh, we went our separate ways. It's a shame. She... Uh, she really captured me. My essence. Your essence is too tame alligators 
My essence is to fear nothing. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. I really admire that about you. I'm sure under that sweet exterior, you're pretty fearless too. I don't know. Haven't you ever done something really scary? I mean, other than snooping on a potential creep. Um, does sailing count? Excuse me? You sail? On a boat? <laughs> I used to, with my grandpa. But when he died, we had to sell the boat to pay off his debts. Damn. Oh, that's too bad. I would have loved to go with you. Maybe it'd be possible to borrow a boat for a day. I think one of Grandpa's friends still has his. There you really? go. That would be great. I just love trying new things. I'll see what I can do. Cute. Hey, look. I think it's dry. I can't believe it worked. Well, let's see I if it... I could not have done this without you. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> Well, I should get back upstairs before Bernard notices my absence. He hasn't already. Let me know how it goes with the key. Oh, and uh, be careful while turning it, okay? You wouldn't want it to break inside the lock. Yeah, I'll be careful. That's right. Thank you for everything. No problem. Damn, plaster key. Pick it up. Yeah, get rid of that. Uh, evidence gone. Good. Key obtained. It's a good uniform. You should be like Mary. Nice little elevator music. Well, let's just uh, barge right in and hope they're not here still. All right, let's see how good of friends they were. Be careful, Sophie. You don't want this key to break. All right. Like my favorite bar, this one was black. Her alliterative name will surely take you back. These two sure love their riddles. In Atlanta, I noticed yours was pretty worn down, so I decided to buy you a new one. I hope you like it, and since you enjoy them so much, here's a little puzzle to figure out the combination. Two five-letter words are the key, both related to our history. Unlike my favorite bar, this one was black. Her alternative name will surely take you back. Uh, from the first one, take the first two. From the last one, take the last two. Um, unlike my favorite bar, this one was black. Okay, so it is the cat's name. Her alternative will surely take you back. I hope you get better. Uh, try to rest today. I will be bringing you soup to my class. That's cute. Huh. Marcella invited you to the movies. Let me guess. You said yes. Yeah. Of course. Nice. The postman always rings twice. Is playing at Lowe's Theater tonight. It's based on a novel I read a while back. I'm sure you will love it. Uh, seeing it as you like crime stories and murders so much. Nothing creepy about that. Will you come with me? Yeah. Nice.
Dear Anne, have you heard Doris Day on the radio and made me think of you? Oh, I have heard, just heard Doris Day on the radio and it made me think of you. I know how much you love Sentimental Journey. Count every mile of railroad track that takes me back. Last time I was in Texas, it felt like coming home. Now, strangely, I feel away from home. I wish you were here with me. I always feel that at home in your arms. I can hardly believe that it has five weeks since we last saw each other. Sometimes I wonder if I might go crazy. You are always in my head. Everything reminds me of you. Not only songs on the radio, but silly things like the flowers in our garden that smell of your shampoo. Or when people say the word darling, and I can hear you say it with your lovely French accent. Darling. My family seems to have noticed my odd behavior, but of course I cannot tell them about you, even though. Even though, I wish I could. I feel like climbing on the roof to the tallest building in Austin and shouting my feelings for you at the top of my lungs. God, I sound like a giddy teenager in love for the first time. Maybe I am. Sometimes I am scared that all this time with you was nothing but a dream. I dream too good to be a dream. Uh, a dream too good to be true. I'm afraid that when I return to Montreal, I will realize that you never existed, or if you do exist, you don't remember me. I wish I had a picture of the two of us, so I would make sure it was real. I long for your embrace and the taste of your sweet lips. I love you, M. I mean... Uh-huh. Dear Anne, I am sorry it took me so long to answer the last letter. It has been six months already since I left Montreal. As you always say, le temps passé, uh, passé si I don't know. I don't know what that means. I don't really speak French, but that's all right. My parents are glad and I am done with my studies. Uh, my parents are glad I am done with my studies. They always thought it was a strange idea for me to go to university. Now they want me to find a husband that have children like any other woman. I think I will. Oh. These past few months, I had lost time to reflect on our relationship. You know my feelings for you, and I hope you never forget how much I love you, but we cannot hide our heads in the sand any longer. We were lucky our story lasted as long as it did, and foolish to think it would last forever. Our love is forbidden. And hiding it from my family proving more and more difficult every day, you will always have a special place in my heart, but I but I believe it is time for us to go our separate ways. You made me feel like a teenager. You made everything but the present disappear. Now I need to be an adult and think about the future. Sincerely, M. Damn. Are we gonna put it back in? That riddle's a duffy. Maybe I need a fresh pair of eyes on it. Hotel reception desk. Beth speaking. Hey, Beth. Got a minute? No. Nope. You always mean. I opened the chest in room 507. Damn. You did? Damn, I have to admit I didn't really believe in a little plaster key, but way to go. Yeah, well, the key did break inside the lock. I hope this won't lead back to us. If it does, we can always flee the country together. I hear Mykonos is quite nice. Yeah, I bet it is. <laughs> A riddle. A riddle? I think it was written by Mrs. Beaumont for Mrs. Cruz. And I think the answer will give me the combination for a case I found in room 509. I could use your help with it, though. Oh, God, I hate riddles. <laughs> well, let's there you go, it. Beth. Which part is causing you trouble? Uh, her alternative name. Um, her alliterative name will surely take you back. Alliterative what now? Andrew, you're a nerd. <laughs> hey, just because I read books doesn't mean I know everything. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. It's a series of words that start with the same sound or letters. Thank you, darling. Uh -huh. Did you get that, Bean? Yeah, I did. All right. I think I know what to do. You do? Great. 
Is there anything else? Uh. Here's another one. Unlike my favorite bar, this one was black. It was a cat. Do you know what this could mean? Yeah, it's a cat. I know what this one is. You said Mrs. Beaumont wrote the riddle, right? Yeah, but I have no idea what her favorite bar Oh, come on. I think I do. Really? How? Uh, that's a story for another time. But if I had to bet, I'd put my money on the white cat. Yep. The white cat. I get I it. I think I get it. Well, that wasn't too hard, was it? Anything else I can help you with? No. no that's all. Thank you. Uh, don't mention it. I'm just glad I could be of some help. Call me after you open that case. You know I will. Okay. Uh, white. Alliterative name. Let's see what we're working with, you know? So, I need to find something related to a black cat and a person whose first and last names start with the same letter. Mm hmm. Okay, so we got. So, I need to find something. All right, what clues we got? Characters. And a person who's first Beth, in Bernard, name Linda. Guests. Paul Morgan, Hector Cruz, Marissa Cruz. Interesting. Who other? I don't know these people. All right. Clues, though. We have business card, no postcard. We've got uh, the cat collar. Ooh, cat collar? Greta? Uh, what do we have? It's the. Where's the matchbox? Match postcard, letter, business cards. Lip sixteen, words of sixteen. No. Where is it? Apology letter, laundry ticket. It's in the bathroom. Whatever, it's in the bathroom. We're gonna go check out the bathroom. Not in here. It's in the other bathroom, right? All right, let's barge in here. Yep, and it should be right. Did we pick it up? Where's the matchbook? Oh, why is it so hard to find now? Alliterative name. Oh. The stupid author, isn't it? Boswell. So it's Boswell. LL. What was the name of that? What was the name of that thing? Wasn't in here? I'd swear there's match all over the place. Matchbooks here. No, not that. Not that. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. Oh, yeah, let's uh, clean that up for you. Uh, did 
They were roommates. Yeah, I know. They were roommates, weren't they? Uh, Paul's gun, stocking journal, binoculars behind Bernard's pill reminder, bottles, uh, rejection letter, pawn slip, envelope pile, hotel plan, stocking proof, pictures, teddy bear, lone shark letters. That was the first room. Apology message, vows. Package, rosary, wedding pictures, calendar, Heather, newspaper, crime novel, business card, trip expenses. Liquid sustain, business card notes. It's card a chain letter, beside note. Writing attempts, angry letter, family picture. Uh, ah, here we go. Uh, what's it called? It is Metcalf. Mel. It was Boswell, right? Ah, uh, let's see. First two and last two. This is Metcalf. Let's read the stupid puzzle again, but I'm pretty sure that's what it was supposed to be, right? Out of my mind? Uh, yeah, unlike the favorite bar, this one was black. Uh, oh, is it just white? W-H. Uh, unlike my favorite bar, unlike my favorite bar, this one was black. Oh, that's the name of the cat, Greta. G-R-L-L. -L. Nice. I just read the read the riddle wrong. Novel by Margaret B. Thompson. That's the wrong one. It's not Holy Bible. Who's got alliterative name? Greta. It's got to be this book, right? Bridget Boswell. Does any of those fit? How many blanks do we have? One, two, three, four, five. Five. Ah, oh, okay. Not that then. Let's check out this guy's room. What's this book? It's more Boswell. Paul Morgan. And who's who's the... Lindsay Franklin. No, not that. Uh, let's check out their notes again. Who has two alliterative names? So, I need to find something related to a black cat. Yeah. And a person whose first and last names start with the same letter. I thought it would have been Boswell. Do and no, not this one. Not the sad ones. 
suit for class. All right. Barely listened to Sister Miller's lecture today. All I could do is look at your lips and imagine kissing you. Nice. Very cute. Postman rings twice. From the last one, take the last two. Okay, so the first one, first two, is Greta, for sure. It's this thing right here, right? Yeah, GR. So we got that. We don't have any other characters with names that are alliterations. Interesting. Uh, Bridget, T E, no, Greta. has an alliteration that they've been writing about. Is it just MM? No, it's not MM. Well, this is uh, a lot of looking around for what it could be. A lot of looking around for what it could be. No combination, no entry. Hmm. Yeah, it's true. Oh, well, we can uh, get rid of that. Don't need to carry around the cups all day. If we have a little tip jar. Any towels? I'm sure, I'll find more laundry to add to the pile. No more towels. So something from their past. So I'm guessing it's the nun, right? Miller? ER? Let's try it. Maybe it's like Maggie Miller? That's still six letters, right? M I L L E R? No, not that one. Yeah, it's six letters. Hmm. So this is only five. Both related to our history. Okay, so the. Cat, for sure. Okay. Mm uh, right, miss you already. Texas, nine years, yeah. It's gotta be Sister Miller. Harry? A Harry's, even Sister Miller's classes, yeah? Gotta be Miller. Gurrer is what I'm gonna go with. Just leaving all the doors unlocked now, open. Doing a real poor job cleaning, but. E. Oh, come on. Is that an R? It's an A. 
P S T O I L. There's no. Okay, well. Damn. All right, it's not Miller. I would have thought it was the nun that they're always talking about, you know? They left a note in the vent. Something from their past. Protect the dream. Uh, all right. Summer way, Matt. This is for me. Very cute. All right. Don't need to know. Recognize your eyes. Yeah. Okay. What's this? Oh yeah, that's the. That's the good old copy pasta. Uh, it takes me back. Oh, is it Texas? No. Doesn't make any sense. Alliteration, right? I don't know what it is. And once I figure it out, I'm going to feel so stupid, which is my favorite part about figuring out these things. It's not Sister Miller. Uh-huh. What's this? Uh, okay. New Year's brings. Yes, yes, yes. What do we got? Family. Knowing you well. Eight... Uh, studying session at Harry's. Harry's? Maybe it's Harry's? Family has before... Alright, let's try Harry. R.Y.? Something to deal with the past? Oh, not that. Unlock? Nope. Hmm. This is Cruise. Information got stolen. Someone from their past. An alliteration. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, should have married Luciana, I guess. All right, we're going back to this this goober's house. All right, what dirt you got? Okay. The lake. Beaver Lake skate rental. Harry's Diner. Okay, Harry's Diner. Tramway. No, that's an alliteration. So, 
I need to find something really. I to know a the cat black cat. And a person whose first and last names start with the same letter. Hmm. The black cat I found. Uh, yeah. Okay, taking that. F and W? No, it's uh, it's definitely. Maybe it's just B B. T E. Doesn't make any sense though. We'll try B B. We'll try T E. We can even do that. There a B. There ain't no B and there ain't no T. So we can't do either of those. Two first, two last. So, I need I know. to find something related to a black cat. Okay. And a person who's writing attempt. The same Family picture. Uh, two wedding rings on the toilet. Metcalf, Montreal, Canada. We know that. Cat collar, Greta. Anne's correspondence. Yeah, this is the one. Okay. Always rings twice. Barely listen to Sister Miss. Yeah. Uh, okay. Huh. I am at a loss. And I'm sure it's looking at me right in the thing. Angry husband? Michael, no. It's a credit chain letter. That's kind of funny. But this. Heartbreaking decision. Seventh novel. They were roommates. The lonely girl. Ian's attorney. Hmm. School board letter. There's no... Nothing here. Mercy. I wonder if it's Bercy. See why? There's no Y's though. Business card. Nothing there. Okay, what do we got in room 509? Laundry ticket. Same day service, sure. Cruise. Apology message. Bunch of that. Okay. Hanging bag. There's a crucifix. Air cup. Let's see if it's in here. Maybe it's in here. Attempt 12. Rose petals on bed. Return trip. Uh, Hector's mother. That's a bunch of nonsense. Yeah, newspaper article. Nothing here. Margot B. Thompson. Interesting. More crime novels, Hector's business card, trip expenses.
All right, what's over here in number 505? Stalker's Pictures. Picture of me snooping through the suitcase of guest. Belgium, sure. Encyclopedia. Definition of works birds, fifth generation. Nope, none of that matters at all. Stocking proof. Nice. Hotel plan. Room service, night mostly. Letter from Lindsay. Uh, Paul Morgan, Lindsey Franklin, Larry's Pawn Shop. Objection letter. Oh, yeah. Mr. Morgan. Uh, film reminder. Buy more film. Good old Reno, Nevada. Uh, binoculars. All right, I'm I'm almost to the point where I'm gonna brute force this. Let's see what our characters look like. Raymond. Dangerous, but Michael can't possibly have a full picture of parents' relationship. Yes, guests. We got Paul Morgan. Cruz. Paul Morgan. Okay. Family. Dad, mom, Rebecca, Jean, Bobby, Beth. Uh, yeah. Alright. It's time to brute force. So, the worst part. Re L, K, A, P? Nope. And back to L. Well, you see, because I don't know what it could possibly be. This is unfortunately... The life I live now. Uh, I did E, so now it's going to be O. Back to uh when we hit L again. And then as soon as I get this right, I know it's going to be... It's going to be so obvious. I'm... Chris. I-S... No idea who that is, what that is, what that had a reference to, but I finished it, and that's what matters. Some kind of typewriter. I didn't solve the riddle, to be fair. I There's a lot of stuff in here. I don't think I've looked at everything yet. Oh. That novelist, Bridget Boswell, is actually you, Marcella? Oh, there you go. Cool, let's read that. Ah, oh, dear Marcella, or should I say Bridget, you know, I prefer a good old crime novel, but last week I came upon a romance novel with an intriguing title, and they were roommates. I bought it on an impulse at a train station and read it cover to cover during the journey. Can you imagine my surprise when I recognized our story? You may have changed the name and locations, but our moments are there. Our endless discussions in the dorm room, our first date at the theater, our trip to Quebec City. You often said writers are thieves, but I never fully understood until now. It had been almost 10 years since I received your last letter. The last that you painted our relationship is nothing more than a summer fling. At first, I could not believe you had written those words. 
Then, I waited in vain for your answer, and I had to accept your love. For me, it had been real. Oh. For many years, I was broken-hearted, angry, confused. I questioned the nature of feelings of our attraction and made many wrong decisions. But this book, your book, am I foolish to think it's proof that you really loved me? In any case, I hope you are well, and I'm happy to see you accomplish your dreams becoming a writer. Trez Sincerement. Oh, Anne. Murder might be a bit much, but you deserve some kind of justice. I didn't expect you to reply to my letter, but I am happy to see I was wrong. Your words have conf uh, conforted to me in a time of great distress. If only Louis was half the man you say Hector is. He has quite the temper and hits me frequently. I'm willing to put up with it as long as he doesn't hurt Michael. But there are some days when it becomes almost unbearable. The other day, I dreamt of our first date. We were watching The Postman only rings twice again, but suddenly we were in the movie. You were Lana Turner and I was John Garfield, and we were both plotting to kill my husband. I hate to admit it, but, uh, admit it, but I almost hope it was premonitary, promo, I don't know what how to say that. Premonitory? Premonitory? Like a premonition. Got it. Nailed it. Okay, to answer your question, I still do have our box. My brother is currently in Atlanta for work, and I was thinking of going to see him with Michael next month. If you were able to meet there, we could open the box. Together, the la uh, together and laugh at the silly things of our important years ago, I hope to hear from you soon. Très sincèrement. Hey. Yes. Do you remember the secret language we invented so Sister Miller couldn't understand the notes we passed during class? In secret languages, I still do. I do like a happy ending. I just hope that's where your story is headed. Thank you for sending me a signed version of your latest novel. I think it's your greatest work yet, but I do have a few comments to make in the next one. First, I believe Rose should be more concerned with what she deserves rather than what her husband deserves. He may not deserve... Uh, the pain she will cause him by leaving him, but both deserve to be happy, and it won't be as long as they remain together. As long as she doesn't listen to her own needs. Also, I think it'd be great if the next novel ended on a more positive note. Imagine if Rose left her husband and rode into the sunset with Eve. Imagine. If they went to New York or Los Angeles, some place where people like us are tolerated. Imagine if they got to have a happy ending. It'd be the best story ever. I hope you'll consider it. P.S. I know you say invis uh, invisibility protects us, but I, but don't you just wish to be seen sometimes? Wouldn't you like to n people to know you are Bridget Broswell? To recognize you on the street? To recognize you for your work? Why not publish your next novel under your own name? Oh, so you came to Montreal under the pretense of celebrating your wedding anniversary. But all along, you meant to reunite with Anne. Come on, Sophie. Of course. I left the house. I left Louis. I couldn't take it anymore. I couldn't lie anymore. How do you do it? How do you manage to live a double life and hide your work and your novel from your husband? I had so much less to hide. And yet, Michael and I are staying in the Clar uh, Clarington Hotel until we find a place to stay and the divorce is done. I don't know how long it will take. Could you come and see me in Montreal? I really need you by my side right now. I wouldn't put it past Louis, Louis, to scour every hotel guest book in the region looking for me under his surname, so I've registered under the name Beaumont. Nice. After all this, turns out you're a fan of Bridget? Of Marcella? That's a lot sweeter than I expected. Dear Marcella, although you don't know me, I think I could safely say I'm your biggest fan of the novels. Uh, you have literally changed my life. After the war, I spent almost 10 years in psychiatric hospital because of panic attacks and other treatments were working and it wasn't getting better. I became friends with one of the nurses who started lending me books so I could pass the time and I really uh, didn't like that first one, uh, like the first ones, but I picked up Bridget Boswell's first novel, your novel. 
I had never read such a beautiful love story. It almost brought tears to my eyes. I immediately urged the nurse to get me more of your books. Believe it or not, the more I read, the less panic attacks I had. The doctors thought I was on a new, and their new medication was finally working, but I knew the truth. Your novels gave me courage to, uh, to get in contact with Lindsay, my friend from the war. Uh, I had always felt for him the same way your characters felt for each other. Oh, I see. But I never dared telling him. Now I have, thanks to you, the thought of seeing him again is what motivated me and better leave the hospital. I hope to hear back from him soon. After my discharge, I wanted to thank uh, you for everything you've done for me. I've discovered Bridget was a pseudonym. So tracking you down took longer than I thought. Fortunately, I'm a very patient and resourceful man, and I never give up. Do you think we could meet... I have some more... That's really strange. I'm glad you were able to open up to Marcella like this. Everyone needs someone to talk to. Yeah, but that's a weird way of going about it. Uh, thanks for answering my letter. I realize that, uh, how unsettling that must have been for you. Please forgive me for tricking your editor into giving me your address. I know I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, no, no shit, bro. What was it talking about? This is insanity. I wanted to thank you, uh as well for encouraging words concerning Lindsay, I still haven't heard from him and I'm starting to fear I might have the wrong address. I wish I could take a train to Virginia, but it's not an option right now as I barely pay rent. I guess I will have to find a job. As a kid, I dreamt of being an actor, a Hollywood star. I know it's a foolish dream, but what else can I do? What am I good at? I've tried getting some odd jobs already, but employers turn me down as soon as they learn I've been in spent the last 10 years of my life in the hospital uh if it continues like this i'll probably end up on the streets like so many of my army buddies why am i even telling you this after reading your books i'm getting to know you even through them I tend to forget i'm only a stranger to you i hope you don't mind you seem to be a good listener and i've been feeling rather lonely since i left the hospital anyways please tell me more about your life and do not hesitate to write long letters I must have read your previous one a thousand times already. All right. Strange. Salary. So Marcella hired you. But what for? I've just received a letter from Lindsay's mother. She tells me he's dead. Words cannot even begin to describe how empty I feel. He died two years ago, before I even sent my first letter. Uh, he will never know my feelings for him and will never know if he could have loved me back. I guess I should have known this would end in pain, just like your novels. I wish I had Lindsay's ability to find beauty everywhere. Even during the war, amidst the death and chaos, he would, uh, he would marvel at the forests of Germany, at the sun, the birds. He loved the birds so much. He could identify them just by listening to their song. I have to admit, your proposition took me by a surprise. I was hesitant to leave home at first, and I was afraid uh, to miss Lindsay's answer, but now there's nothing to keep me here. I am desperate for anything that will help me forget this pain, but I do not have enough money to, uh, to make it to Texas. Do you think you can be in advance on my salary? Uh, in spite of everything, I'm really excited to know i finally meet you. All right. Well, that is horrifying. And uh, there we go. So, let me get this straight. Mrs. Beaumont and Mrs. Cruz are some kind of star-crossed lovers? Yeah. It seems like it. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm not sure whether they chose to meet here just to reconnect for a few days, or if there's something more to it. Yeah. Well, I may be able to help with that. Really? How? Oh, some mail arrived earlier for Mrs. Bowman. You're gonna go through her mail? Hmm. I wonder what's in it. We could open it. I mean, that's yeah. kinda illegal. You're going to get the Mounties yeah, coming down. They're going to trample is. down your door with their big old horses. Well, too late. I've always known I would end up in prison one day. God damn. <laughs> so? It's three train tickets. And, uh, oh, there's a tourism pamphlet for California. Nice. California. Well, it makes sense. It's much more progressive there than it is here. So... Anna and Marcella want to go there to live their love freely. Anna and Marcella, huh? You three are best pals now? Mm-hmm. Um, after reading so much of their correspondence, I kind of feel like I know them, you know? Yeah. Well, what about 
Mr. Morgan, though? I mean, Paul. How does he fit into all of this? Uh... I think Marcella hired him. Yep. I found some letters Paul wrote to her. He said that her proposition took him by surprise and that he'd need an advance on his salary. What did she hire him for? To investigate her own affair? No. I'm not sure. I didn't find the letter he was replying to. And why did he have those pictures of you anyway? I guess we'll never know for sure, but I don't think it was ever about me. It's always been about Anne and Marcella. Yeah, exactly. and the husband well, that he's going to murder. But who needs drama, right? At least it made our day pretty interesting. It sure did. You know, after today, I think I get why you're so interested in the lives our guests lead. Mm -hmm. I try to forget they exist as soon as I'm done interacting with them. That's a fair but way to live, though. Once in a while, it's nice to remember that well, even the most put-together person could be an absolute mess on the other side of the door. Ooh, there we go. What about you? Who is Beth Lambert when no one's looking? I like to think that with me, what you see is what you get. But maybe an extra Snoopy super sleuth could uncover a few more layers. Maybe ones I didn't even know I had. Ooh, there you go. Challenge accepted. Shift ends, all right. We could leave together if you want. Sure, if we're able to. With all that snow, I'm thinking maybe we'll have no choice but to spend the night here. Ooh, a sleepover. We could set up a pillow fort on the mezzanine. A pillow fort? Mm. We do work in a hotel, you know. There are actual beds here. I know, but isn't my way so much more fun? Well, we could take a page out of Michael's book and decorate it. And then spend the night throwing stuff at Bernard whenever he comes through the lobby. Oh, now you're talking. There you go. <laughs> I just have to finish my tasks for the day, and then I can leave. And tasks for the day are for next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.